Hello, my name is Muhammad Mukhlis bin Hassan. I will talk about heritage site which is Stadium Merdeka. Stadium Merdeka is a stadium in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It has significance as the site of the formal declaration of independence of the Federation of Malaya on 31 August 1957 and the first modern building of the new nations. The stadium was the principal venue in Kuala Lumpur for celebration and sporting events until 1962 when the stadium Negara was built. In 2008, the Stadium Merdeka received the UNESCO Asia Pacific Award for Excellence for Heritage Conservation owing to its cultural significance and embodiment of a unique independence declaration event. Stadium Merdeka was constructed from 25 September 1956 to 21 August 1957 and was designed by architect Stanley Edward. It is the site of one of Malaysia's most historically significant events. On 31 August 1957, power was transferred from the British Empire to the newly independent Malayan government. Ten of thousands of people crowded into the stadium, which was built specifically for this occasion. The stadium served as the principal venue in Kuala Lumpur for celebrations and sporting events until the mid 1990 when the Bukit Jalil National Stadium was built. The stadium and its land were given to a private company which had intended to, de- to redevelop the land into a 1 billion entertainment and office complex. In exchange, the company was required to build seven other stadiums in other locations. However, however the company did not proceed with the redevelopment due to public outcry and the company's financial difficulties due to the late 1990 Asian economic crisis. In February 2003, Stadium Merdeka was named a National Heritage Building. In 2007, Merdeka Stadium underwent restoration to its original 1957 condition as part of Malaysian 50 anniversary plans to relive the moment when Tunku Abdul Rahman proclaimed independence there. The restoration was complete by December 2009. The restoration received the UNESCO Asian Pacific 2008 Award of Excellence for Cultural Heritage Conservation. There is many events hosted in the stadium. For example, the Merdeka tournament from 1957 to 1965, Michael Jackson History World Tour 27 and 29 October 1969, and beyond 21st Anniversary World Tour Live 11 October 2003. For interpretation, did you know about the architect who built Stadium Merdeka and Stadium Negara? Yes, there is Stanley Edward. Stanley Edward is American architect as well as an engineer. He practiced in Malaysia and joined Public Work Department (PWD) from 1941 until 1962, after he completed his study in England. He had close relationship with Malaysians then Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman led head to his getting several prominent architectural commission in Malaysia including for Stadium Merdeka and Stadium Negara Next for function of Stadium Merdeka Do you know about function of Stadium Merdeka Stadium Merdeka has been functioned for huge 
and well-known sport event and concerts. The stadium was the principal venue in Kuala Lumpur for celebration and sporting events until the year 1962 when the Stadium Negara was constructed. Its capacity can reach around 20,000 seats and meet the requirement for huge event to be held. It has a few private facilities such as existing ticketing booths, VIP holding room and changing room below the seating areas. Next is transportation. The Stadium Merdeka is located at Kuala Lumpur. It is also located behind Stadium Negara. The stadium is also connected to the major routes such as Jalan Stadium and Jalan Maharajalela. The stadium is accessible by public transport such as LRT, taxi and monorail. By taking LRT to Stadium Merdeka, the nearest LRT stadium is Hang Tuah Station. It only takes 15 minutes of walk to reach Stadium Merdeka. The walking distance is 1 km. By taking monorail, the nearest station is Maharajalela Station. It only takes 5 minutes of walk to reach Stadium Merdeka. Stadium Merdeka also have uh, some features of climax, which is climax response. The typical features of the climate of Malaysia are radium temperature, hot and humid throughout the year. Wind are generally light. Stadium Merdeka is an open air stadium and it is boiled on a hill. So most of the time it will be exposed to the sunlight during the peak hours. Stadium Merdeka has a better air ventilation due to an open air stadium. Therefore, there is no air conditioner or fan in the stadium, but there are cantilever concrete shell roof to provide shades and avoid from the direct sunlight. For the location of Stadium Merdeka, Stadium Merdeka has only a main access point from Jalan Stadium. Besides of using motorcar, the location also allow public transport such as bus, MRT or LRT transit to reach, to reach destination. There are several well-known skyscraper and landmarks in Kuala Lumpur that surrounded Stadium Merdeka such as Chin Wu Stadium, Stadium Negara and others which had same categories characteristics of modern post merdeka architectural style and historical background due to its strategic location stadium merdeka had totally taken advantage of their connection of public transport and historical heritage near this building and become a reason of its uniqueness next is building of stadium merdeka Stadium Merdeka is the first modern building in Malaysia built by the order of the first Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra for the purpose of declaration of independence from the British colonization. With the help of architect Stanley Edward and his team, the design of the stadium successfully complete and that leads to the ground breaking ceremony which was on 25 September 1956 and the construction finally ended on 21 August 1957 the construction work commenced commenced after the ground breaking ceremony started with excavation works with the help of machine as Impact of Tourism The impact of the tourism of Stadium Merdeka include the effect of tourism on the environment and on destination, communities and its economic contribution. It has been part of the tourism discourse since 1970 which attention 
growing in recent years due to debates on over-tourism. Tourism impacts fall into three main categories. Environmental impact affect the carrying capacity of the area, air quality, bodies of water, and the water table. The tourism impacts are usually seen as positive contributing to employment, better service, and social stability. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.